factory still not receiving adequate doses to keep up with demand. For more, let's bring in our politician panel. Liberal MP Fiona Martin joins us in the studio. Good to see you, Fiona. Hi. And Labor MP Josh Wilson joining us from Perth. Hi there, Josh. Hi, good morning. Um, Fiona, if we can just start with you and, and the rollout. The government has been accused of bungling the rollout at first. There were supply issues beyond the government's control, but since then it's been accused of, of mixed messages, offering deadlines, moving deadlines, quashing deadlines overall. What do you think the government has gotten wrong with the rollout? Look, I think we need to firstly thank Australians for um, doing such a good job of managing um, COVID. Australians have been receptive to health messaging. Um, um, we've we've done really well as a country. I think we need to congratulate all Australians on their efforts in this. I heard yesterday that uh, we had a record number of vaccinations. Over around 100,000 people were vaccinated. 1, mm -hmm. Yeah, so th that is you know good good number. That the highest we've had in one day, and. 3.5 million Australians are now vaccinated with their first dose. So this is promising, this is good, and I think, you know, we are a vaccination nation, uh, and I'm confident that we're going to get there. Do you think that the government could have handled it better with respect to messaging? Not at all. I think that we're doing a great job. I think that we've been encouraging Australians to be vaccinated the whole way through. Obviously, you know, people make that decision themselves as individuals. Um, with information, we've been transparent and I think that we've handled it quite well, actually, in the sense that, you know, uh, we've set up vaccination clinics. I know in my electorate of Reed, we have a big vaccination clinic open six days a week from 8am to 8pm and people are turning up in droves now and registering to be vaccinated. Josh Wilson, what do you think uh, the government could have been doing more with, when it comes to messaging? Because we certainly are seeing some hesitancy around uh, getting the vaccination. Well, I join with Fiona in, in saying that the most important thing is people do get vaccinated when they become eligible. And it's right to say that Australia as a whole, particularly the Australian community, has responded pretty well. Uh, but what's needed is clear and consistent messaging. We haven't always seen that, both in relation to the, the practical arrangements uh, and then even in relation to the, the different types of vaccine and when people should be expected to get that. Even this week, uh, the Minister for Health was saying some funny things about whether or not people who are eligible now for AstraZeneca uh, should go and get vaccinated or perhaps wait until the end of the year. Uh, that sort of messaging isn't particularly helpful. The elements of the vaccine rollout have always been pretty obvious. They're not that complicated. We need clear and consistent messaging. We need a solid set of practical arrangements. And then that all needs to be harnessed to a, a sensible plan. And those elements haven't always been there. We need them to be there. Fiona, on those comments by Greg Hunt, he was encouraging people over 50 to get their vaccination. That's the government's message. Says yeah. If you're eligible, you know, there is a sense of urgency to get it. But then also followed up by saying that there will be enough mRNA, which is the Pfizer vaccine, later um, in the year. He's since clarified those comments, stressing that AstraZeneca is safe to get. But that is a confusing comment to make. So what's been clear from the beginning is that we've been taking the expert medical advice as we've gone through this and what we know now is that AstraZeneca is for the over 50s, Pfizer is for under 50 and we've now secured Moderna 25 million doses which is um, an mRNA technology mm. similar to Pfizer. So we're in a good place, the messaging is clear and we take the expert medical advice as it comes in to make decisions for Australians. So should the over 50s wait until the end of the year or should they be getting their AstraZeneca? That's the confusion in Greta. The over 50s mm. is AstraZeneca. Mm. Mm. Josh, just on this before we move on, uh, on to something else, how would Labor have perhaps mm. managed this differently with respect to the messaging over the rollout? Well, it goes to the, the elements that I've just mentioned. Do you want to have a plan that that sits over everything and then within that plan, clear and consistent messaging and solid practical arrangements. I mean, we've been supportive of the government's response to the pandemic because that's the responsible thing to do. But we did say that uh, they should have ensured there were more options when it came to the vaccine. Uh, we've, we've talked about the need to uh, be clear with, when it comes to targets and certainly when it comes to messaging and encouragement. If you have in the budget week the Prime Minister and the Treasurer and other members of the government not quite clear what uh, getting the vaccine rollout complete by the end of 2021 actually means. That's, that's not helpful. Uh, some of the things that the Minister for Health said around uh, what kind of vaccine people should take and when 
that's not particularly helpful. But then more importantly, if, if people are being encouraged to have the vaccine, it turns out that they can't actually get it because some of the practical arrangements aren't in place. That's not helpful either. Well, yeah, we are hearing this morning that the state uh, AMA president in New South Wales, Fiona, Dr Daniel uh, McMullen, says that some clinics are getting limited deliveries of the AstraZeneca vaccine while others have an oversupply. Is there still an issue with supply? Not as, as far as I'm aware. Um, I believe AstraZeneca, we have enough supply um, of, and I know that the clinic at um, Sydney Olympic Park in my electorate of Reed, um, there, there is enough for, for over 50s um, and for, for the under 50s it's Pfizer. Mm. Um, we've always taken the advice, you know, the medical expert medical advice the whole way through. Um, and, you know, we have a portfolio of five different vaccines and, you know, we have a very thorough um, process for uh, examining the um, vaccines as they come through the Therapeutic Goods Administration. And that is the process that we follow um, and we should continue to follow so that we make decisions um, in the best interests of Australians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We want to move on uh, to an another topic. Yesterday we saw school students get out and, and protest and uh, call for the government to take more action on climate change. This comes, of course, today it's the, it's the Hunter by-election and um, during this election campaign we've had the announcement uh, that there'll be this $600 million gas-fired power plant at Curry Curry in the Hunter Valley and that's something that these protesters yesterday were calling for to be cancelled. Josh, is that something that you support? There are some within Labor, uh, for example, Joel Fitzgibbon, who says that this is needed. Um, and, and if the, the government says that it's intervened when the market doesn't deliver, is that the best way forward? Well, it, it, the project is, is bananas. It's a ridiculous project. It's going to pour $600 million of taxpayers' money uh, down the chute. And all of the energy experts and market regulators and the people who understand this area best um, have said it's not needed. It'll hardly ever be used. It will cause electricity prices uh, to go up and it'll deter uh, private investment. And of course, it'll, it'll cause carbon emissions to go up as well. So it, it's, it's not a project that should be proceeded with. Labor would love the government to uh, break its habit of uh, great secrecy around these things and release the business case. Uh, but there's nobody who has a, really a good word to say about the project. Uh, uh, and, and, and I guess the only thing about it that makes sense is that it's completely in the slot for this government. It's the kind of manoeuvre we've seen from this government over and over, wasteful with taxpayers' funds, uh, bloody-mindedly ignorant of the science and the economics when it comes to energy and climate change, and, and quite happy to see some taxpayers' funds uh, go into the pockets of, of its friends. Fiona, what's your opinion of the plant? We just heard from Josh there. It was announced the day when the International Energy Agency said that we needed to be moving away from this type of investment mm. to reach climate targets. And it also coincided in the week that we saw those protests by the students. Is the government out of touch by pursuing this? Not at all. Um, firstly, can I just say how important it is for young people to be engaged in the political system? And so it's wonderful that young people are interested and, and have a strong view and communicate that. However, I would like them to be in school and if they were, you know, passionate about an issue, that they should write to their MP and, and ask for them well, to Well, they say there. school doesn't matter if there's no future for them to live in. Well, well, the government is on track. Uh, and, you know, what's important is that Australian families and businesses have reliable um, and affordable energy. That is what's important, especially as we're coming back from the COVID, you know, induced recession. That is incredibly important. We don't want a repeat of what happened in South Australia where the lights went out. Um, this this gas um, plant, um, $600 million investment, um, is about the transition to renewables. We're moving in that direction. That's where we're going, um, and we've demonstrated that. And is it the cheapest? When even AAEMO said that there were cheaper alternatives in, in renewables, such as solar, wind, batteries, etc. We're investing in all of that. We're moving in that direction, and I think what's important first and foremost is that Australians are able to have heating during the winter and air conditioning during the summer. These are very important. Businesses really rely on affordable energy. But the government saying that it intervenes if the market doesn't deliver. If this is the best way forward economically, wouldn't the market have delivered this? Look, I think we're moving in that direction. As I said, affordable and reliable energy is the approach. We're moving towards um, renewables. We're making investments. 
this is just a transition as we move in that direction. What's Labor's alternative then, Josh Wilson? Well, Labor's alternative is that we should have a national energy policy that is clear about path to uh, reduce emissions, increase renewable energy and storage so that we get uh, the cheapest form of uh, new electricity generation into the market. And we do so while uh, tackling climate change as part of global cooperative efforts. I mean, we know that renewable energy is the cheapest form of new generation. What we need is a national energy plan. What we need is uh, an overarching plan to uh, deliver sensible energy policy and emissions reduction. We haven't had that for eight years under the uh, Abbott Turnbull Morrison government and Australia has drifted as a result. I mean, our, our approach is and has always been that you need that that overarching approach to provide certainty for investment and certainty for the market, which is going in the direction of renewables at quite some pace. You need investment in uh, grid stability and transmission, which we've said we would deliver, and of course, investment in the next stage of community action, which is around uh, storage capability to follow on from uh, the solar revolution that Labor delivered when it was last in government. Well, Josh Wilson joining us from the West and Dr Fiona Martin joining us in the studio. Thank you both for your uh, discussion points and insights this morning. Welcome. Thank you. Well, it's time.